everybody. My name is Leslie Kendall. I'm the chief historian of the Peterson Automotive Museum. And here we are today in the museum's famous vault where we're here to talk about another million dollar car for a million dollar car's themes. Here we are today to talk about a 1939 Bugatti type 57C. Now in 1939, you could order a Bugatti out of the catalog of available body styles or you could order just the chassis and then have it sent to a coach builder and they would build any body that you wanted. This was a very special car built for a very special reason. The French government was the customer for this car. The French government ordered this car as a new chassis from Bugatti and had it sent to the coach builder Von Vuren to create this, this fantasy in metal that we see in front of us. It was built for the French government to give to the Shah of Iran, which at the time was the Prince of Iran, the Crown Prince of Iran, on the occasion of his marriage to Princess Fauzi of Egypt, it, again in 1939. And this was quite a bauble to, to, to get from one country to another, because when you consider that uh, America reportedly gave the Shah a Airstream trailer, and England reportedly gave the Shah a, a tea set, you can kind of see where the, where the direction of, um, uh, of generosity was, was going. Uh, France very much wanted to curry the favor of, of Iran because of the oil reserves it believed that Iran held and was going to share with them if, if, if they could get close enough as countries. Interesting features about this car abound. For example, under the hood is a straight eight, 3.3 liter, double overhead cam, mostly aluminum engine. And if that wasn't enough, it's fitted with a supercharger. And that's what the C means in the Type 57C model designation. The C stands for compressor or compressor in French, which means supercharger, forced induction. Moving to the outside, once the hood is back down, you move to the outside, and of course, all the interest is behind the wheel. This is where you wanna be. But as exciting as this car is to look at, there are so many details that are interesting when you get up close to it. For example, even the door handles are interesting. You open the door by pushing on this section, rotating it down, and it pops open. And what you'll notice immediately about the door is the chrome plating fascia here. And Von Vuren didn't have to do that, but when you're buying a coach built car, virtually every surface that you're gonna see is finished. Most American cars today, most, car, most cars of any country, you look at and this is painted, but here again, it's a chrome-plated piece of metal. And you'll also notice the wood caps on the door and the wood cap on the, the, the panel that conceals the top when it's down. You'll also notice the vents, the cowl vents that you can rotate open or rotate closed, depending on how hot you are and how much air you wanted to get in. Now, if you were in Iran, chances are you would have those open most of the time. And also chances are you would have the windshield rotated down because this is one of the few cars ever built that you can actually lower the windshield by means of a hand crank underneath the dashboard. So saying you're driving slowly and maybe you wanna be seen by your subjects, this is how you'll drive the car. Or maybe you're giving somebody the tour of the countryside on your, on your very few miles of paved road. Maybe you want to go a little faster, so you, you, you crank the windshield back up again. Once the windshield is raised, then you can latch the top to it if you want to drive the car in its enclosed configuration. And I'm telling you, it looks just as sexy with the top up as it does with the top down, and very few cars can say that. Looking closely at the body, you can probably tell that this was something that wasn't hammered out in half an afternoon. This took a lot of time and a lot of expertise by expert metal shapers. For example, these curves could not have been stamped out on a machine. They're, they're simply too organic. You have a little indentation here right above the fender skirt. You've got these chrome plated details at the very bottom that flow all the way to the back. So you've got a seamless um, ex line that kind of brings the car down to earth. And if you're standing far enough away from it, the car looks like it doesn't even have wheels. It looks like it's floating over the ground. 
If you're looking at the front of the car, you'll notice that they, they had to make allowances for the wheels to turn. So the fenders are out a considerable distance from the wheels so that you can allow you can allow them to turn. But looking in profile, this car glides over the surface and everything about it is, is hand-built. Everything is one of a kind. Even, this, even these little chrome flashes on the side, the chrome trim, the handles are unique to this car. Like any other Bugatti or any other car of, of its type and of its nature, this is not the kind of vehicle that you just drive into a, a, a garage and say, please fix it. If something goes wrong with the car, either mechanically or, or cosmetically, it's going to take an expert to fix it, but boy, is it worthwhile. Considering the car's provenance and the fact that this car is so attractive, so rare, such a good performer, um, it's very easy to see how it could be worth well into seven figures, perhaps even an eight-figure sum of money.